Hi there, we're here once again. We put out a video each time we put out a new issue of the uh, Medical Post Tablet Edition. And uh, my name is Colin Leslie. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Medical Post. And I'm Tristan Bronco, the staff writer at the Medical Post. Right, so first topic we've got is uh, improving emergency departments. So what needs to be improved with emergency departments? Um, a lot of things. I, I think the, the biggest thing right now in emergency departments uh, biggest problem perhaps with emergency departments right now is wait times um, and one very important metric for wait times is uh, time to physician initial assessment so um, for our cover story of this issue we went up to uh, South Lake Emergency Department which has one of the um, which has one of the fastest emergency departments uh, in the province I think um, at least when it comes to this metric for so, time so, to physician so how assessment. are they doing that what are they doing so they're they're Three things really that they're doing um, that I noticed when I went, when I went up there. Now, it, uh, one of our bloggers actually, Sean Watley, wrote a book recently, um, looking at and described it as sort of like a ten-step process um, that they That's took. That's the, the No More Lethal Weights book. That's right. Yeah, yeah No More Lethal Weights. So um, he he described ten steps. Um, I've I've sort of, for the purposes of our article, simplified that down to three or shrunk it down to three. Um, and those three steps are. Um, First, they have a new call system. Now, this isn't totally yeah. unique. There are some other emergency departments that have set this up around the province, but um, basically the premise is that instead of paying a physician to be on call, what they do is they don't pay the physician who's on call. They have him as an as a absolute last resort, yeah. and rather they pay doctors six or seven times as much as that fee to go into the department, so to actually be there. So it provides a tremendous incentive to actually get physicians right, into so the department. people want to go in for that. So what exactly. was the second thing that they did? The second thing that they did was um, they sort of uh, rejigged the setup in their emergency department. So rather than using stretchers, for example, for all patients, uh, most of whom don't usually require stretchers, they will... Uh, one of the rules that they say is to keep vertical patients vertical. So they use chairs, um, patients can wait for tests in chairs, they can even receive treatment in chairs, and, and that just makes for things, uh, it, it's, it's a space saver first of all. Uh, but the other thing they do is they, uh, they use exam tables. So um, because there are fewer exam tables and there are stretchers, physicians are forced to use them as a sort of shared resource and it keeps the patients moving through uh, rather than sort of sticking them on a stretcher and wheeling them around when they don't necessarily need to be wheeled around. Right. And, and what's the third thing? The third thing is actually uh, probably the most unique and that is um, flexible scheduling for doctors. Now, um, there is what, one, what, what do you mean by that? So in at St. Joseph's is another hospital that already does this, yeah. um, but South Lake, what they're doing is rather than having sort of a fixed start and end time for doctors, they have doctors come in basically when the need arises. So they set up their shifts um, according to a sequence rather than according to a, um, a specific time. So there's the first shift of the day, the second shift of the day, third shift of the day, fourth shift of the day, and these are all named after Canadian cities sort of moving from east to west. Um, and so, so, so basically, uh, so they sort of contact the ER and say how busy are we and then they come in early or whatever if need be or come in a little later if it's not busy? Exactly, that's exactly uh -huh. what happens. And, and you went up to South Lake, what did the, the emergency doctors think of that? Uh, what did they think of that? Yeah. They, um, well, they seem to be okay with it. It's interesting because at first a lot of them were really resistant to this idea as you can imagine, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, because what ends up happening sometimes is an eight hour shift becomes a nine hour shift and you know once or twice a year it might even become like a 12 hour shift. Yeah. Uh, but the upside is occasionally you get to go home early. Yeah. Um, what was what really made this stick, I think, though, is uh, the fact that um, this provided doctors a lot more control over the yeah. patient flow in the ED, yeah. and they um, ended up they ended up liking that a lot because they had a lot more control. Now they were talking about when I went up there, they were talking about physician meetings. You know, at most hospitals, um, sometimes doctors are, are sort of involved. Some people will show up, some people won't. But here, they're always you know super into it, and, and uh, yeah. So it, I, once they started, it, there was sort of no going back. Interesting stuff. What have yeah. we got next? We've got uh, binding arbitration. Yeah, so um, this was your editorial yeah. for this issue. Now, I, I think a lot of doctors, it's definitely the more politically active ones, will know what binding arbitration yeah. is, but maybe for those that don't, um, you can explain what it is. Sure, so it's, it's a, a regular labor thing. So when two groups can't agree and they've reached the end of their capacity to agree, um, an outside group of arbitrators is put together. It's uh, the, the plan in the Ontario Medical Association proposed that it would be three. Um, they're usually mutually selected, both sides select, and then the people come up with, a, the, the arbitrators come up with a decision, and that's it. That's what the, the final ruling is between 
this in pass over how much to be paid or all those kind of issues. Who are these arbitrators typically? Um, in Ontario, at least, there's it's a small, relatively small group of people. It's about 40 or 50 or so people who do it for different. They'll do it for, um, you know, if there's a debate with uh, prison guards and their their compensation or any any kind of group. There, it's not all that many people. I, I'm not totally sure who they originally were. They're probably come from a legal background, but. Um, yeah. And um, Ontario or Ontario's doctors, the Ontario Medical Association, is in court right now trying yeah. to win um, finding arbitration because of the fallout that they had with the government. So can you just explain what it is they're fighting for and why they're fighting for it? Sure, yeah. So last January, uh, in uh, the, the Madden Police Association of Ontario versus the Ontario uh, Attorney General of Canada and two other cases, um, the Supreme Court basically said, you have a right, if you, if you don't have a legal right to, uh, ability to strike, you have to have some kind of other protection in, the, in, in, in your, your labor negotiations. That doesn't mean binding arbitration, it means something though. So they, the, the Ontario Medical Association has a charter challenge that's going through and, and taking that position to the Supreme Court again to see whether that applies to doctors as well. It'll probably take about two years to go through, but if it does, it really will quite change the dynamic for how medical associations, it basically said medical associations like prison guards and other groups are, are, are essential services, and therefore they need some kind of extra protection, which they don't currently have. It, some provinces have a, a kind of binding arbitration, but it's, this would be, I think, once it's backed by the Supreme Court, a, a more strong and significant thing. So. I think doctors are really, really paying attention to this. It would really change the way that um, fee negotiations happen in the provinces. So, so I understand in, in Nova Scotia they actually had this in place, yeah. and then the I, th I think it was the government made a move to take this away. So <laughs> can you? Why did they do that? Sure. They, the uh, some of the provinces are concerned that arbitrators don't take into account the taxpayer's ability to, to pay, and and we've certainly seen that with other groups that have binding arbitration, the, the, the police, um, um, prison um, jail guards have it. Um, and, and basically there's been what's called the leap frog effect, whereas if there, there's a dispute, they, instead of coming to a conclusion about what to pay, they go, how much did, are you getting in another jurisdiction? And they're, they're brought up to that level. Mm -hmm. So the concern is that it rises really fast. It certainly happened in, in, in the police compensation is written much faster than the rate of inflation and the concern is that's going to happen to doctors too. Doctors, you know, it's a big group of people. In Ontario, one out of every ten dollars goes to doctor compensation of, of, the, of the provincial budget. So it's, it's a big issue, um, but they genuinely have, a, you know, some kind of need for something beyond uh, some kind of extra compensation in how they negotiate, you know. And I think, uh, well, I was reading your editorial, yeah. and, and one of the things you said is that there might be a public outcry where, you know, all the provinces to brought up to, you know, yeah. sort of the level of, of the highest payer. Uh, I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, what, whether or not you see any resolution to that. I mean, is, is there any way to grant people our binding arbitration without having mm -hmm. the taxpayer freak out, I guess? Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the thing is, technically in Ontario, the arbitrators are supposed to take into account the... Um, uh, employer's ability to pay. In, in practice, that hasn't really happened. But you know, if, if if you have to totally take in the employer's ability to pay, how is that different than in Ontario, where the Liberal government basically went to the negotiating table, says this is the max we'll pay, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not really any better. So it, in my mind, it has to be something better than that. So I. I, I actually don't know what the final solution here is, but, but I think it's going to be a big issue coming along because doctors are a big, big group in terms of how much the provinces spend out of their, their, their revenue. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with it. But, um, I guess we'll look, look forward to seeing what happens. Sounds good. So I think that's it for us. Uh, here's our contact information at the Medical Post. Uh, we, a new tablet issue is out. Our website and Twitter is there. Thanks, folks. Thank you.